Everybody, you are in the Ozone, live from Koreatown in Los Angeles, California. I am Omar Miller. You can find me on Twitter at Omar Miller, on Instagram at Omar Benson Miller. And this is my brother, Terry. Terry Miller. Hey, everybody. How's it going out there in social media land? Yeah. You know how's, how's it going? It's going sleepy because uh, Amir Khan got put to sleep. And it was happens unfortunate. To the best of them. It does happen to the best yeah. of them. What can you and, do? And he, he actually was putting up a great fight. Fought a great fight. He had a great game plan, great fight. I, You know, it, we talked about it before. We were concerned with his glass jaw. And, I mean, I wouldn't even consider this a glass jaw situation because he got rocked. That could have knocked out a couple of the heavyweights. <laughs> could have knocked yeah. out some of the big boys. <laughs> Go to sleep. But yeah, and so, you know, I think that the situation, let's break down the fight from what I saw uh, Amir Khan, I thought he was winning the fight. If right, anything, now, you, it was, it was, you know, maybe it was, uh, 3-2, but right, I thought he was so winning the fight. So you felt like he won a couple, a couple of rounds. You felt like Canelo? Though, yeah. A couple of times because you know what? Canelo went to the body early. And that body, you know how I love people going to the body. It's a lost art. And he went to the body to try to slow him down. And I felt like that was a direct, uh, learning that he picked up from fighting Floyd Mayweather, where he should have tried to go for the body instead of headhunting. You're not going to headhunt a guy who's quicker than you. You're yeah. just not, because he's not going to allow himself to, to, you know, to get hit by those monster right. bashes. Right. He gave him the Komodo dragon. He wore down the body and then slowly but surely stalked him. Uh. And this is what ended up leading to the knockout. Now, but before we get there, let's talk about what Amir Khan came out and did. Amir Khan came out and popped a jab. And he he actually hit Canelo with a lot of combinations uh, early. Nice combos. Nice sharp, crisp condo con, oh, condos. He's right. actually he's right. in the market for a condo. I was out. He was thinking that. Miami. Hey, hook him up with your agent. I will. I, I'll set him up. Maybe he can be young ballers. Uh, but no, he hit him with some nice crisp combos, and it was very interesting because we got a we got a little news clip we're gonna play where he talks about those combos and how fighting the bigger man put him in a position where his combinations didn't have the same effect that they usually have for somebody that's in his weight class. Right. And time and time again we see these guys move up in weight class and they get put to sleep. In every sport. In every combat sport. Right. And it's sort of like what Floyd's trying to get uh Triple G to do, move up in weight so they can get wore out a little bit and then come down and fight him. Yeah, but I you know I don't know. As per the still retired Floyd Mayweather, I didn't even whatever. But I, I, I think that with these guys, I think that Amir Khan saw his his window to step up uh, to get paid because he got paid and he hadn't been fighting much over the last few years. And like you had said, he, you know, a lot of guys dodged him in the welterweight division. Right. He's a problem. He's a problem, uh, especially if you don't if he doesn't have to worry about getting knocked out by one punch because exactly. he can actually sit in the pocket and fire. Exactly. And and he can do some damage. But what I saw Canelo was Canelo missed a lot of shots. I mean, he threw a lot of shots and missed and hit the air a lot more than he hit the, his actual his target. As you hear me say often, he's a plotter. He you is know, a plotter, and, and I think he, he load showed up that. and walk, stalk you with his right. And he wants to stalk you. Yeah, and if you pepper him with, with that Ramirez. jab, and yeah, he's, he's a stalker. night stalker. <laughs> he's a night stalker. Date stalker too. <laughs> Blake, yeah, they walk. <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh, Wesley Snipes out there with it, and he's stalking you, stalking you. And if you give him something to think about, that's how you can beat him. And I feel like Amir Khan actually went in there with the right idea. He went in there, he popped his jab. I actually saw him eat a couple big punches from Canelo early. Like he ate a couple, right. a left. He, he took two big lefts. Now the left he that he took, rolled. he rolled with it though. That was nice. Yeah, that was awesome because he took he absorbed that punch and he didn't have to stand there and you know literally get his electric bill not paid and oh, <laughs> get shorted out early. Disconnected. Yeah, he got disconnected. Now I don't really think that the weight, you know, actually as is as important the night of the fight because those guys come in at their natural weight after the weigh-in. Right. You know, so Amir Khan just is not a big puncher. He's just not a big puncher. And there's he nothing he can do a, about yeah, that. He can't take big punches, although that punch that he got hit with was a whale, was, was a monster mammoth punch. Yeah, it sure was. 
but that's sort of shame on him because he fell for the faint, which he had felt he, he was falling, falling for, for faint all early night. in the fight. And then somebody saw that and said, you know what? Let's set him up for later on. We'll get him with that. And they did. And, and they did. Man. And then you and watched the patient. house of cards tumble. Sure did. And, and oh, my God, his head hit the canvas so hard. You know, supposedly that's where you get the brain damage. <laughs> he was out before he hit the ground. That's where you get the <laughs> CTE is because you don't protect yourself when you fall down if you guys watch the replay again out there if you remember the night of the fight he gets hit he's knocked out on his feet and then he goes down like a sack of potatoes and his head banged on the canvas so hard this is where these guys end up having problems right and i thought that canelo thought that he might have killed him the way that it looked pretty bad yeah yeah it it looked pretty bad he would have doubled up but he oh thank god he didn't yeah but you know so ultimately if you watch it he goes to the body, and you see how effective those early body punches were because Khan tries to parry the body punch by knocking it down with his hands as opposed to wearing it by keeping his elbow tucking in his his, his abdominal. And when he did that, his guard was completely down, and Canelo came back with the overhand right, and that's all she wrote. Say goodnight, yeah. Gracie. Yeah, that's just an acclamation of body torture and punishment. You sure know? is. Sure is. Let's hear what Amir had to say about it. The next morning, uh, uh, Ellie Sekback from ES News had, a, had an exclusive in Amir's room. Let's check this out. Very hard to beat, but obviously that when you find someone physically bigger than you, who you hit with combinations, then they're going to com- keep coming back. Because I was catching Canelo with some big shots, and it was like he wasn't feeling it. I mean, some shots went through, and it, it did hurt him. But you can see that normally if that was a guy at my own weight or someone similar weight to me, I would have definitely hurt him. Um, but look, all credit goes to him and he, he did what he had to do. Um, and obviously, we just have to go back to drawing board and see where we go from here. You remember before? You know, I, what a nice guy. And what can you do? He's telling the truth right yeah, there. Yeah. He, and he's right. Tell the truth he, and shame the devil. He shamed that devil. <laughs> the devil's a liar. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he told the truth. I mean, he told the truth, and it was real because he did hit him with some good combos. Right, and I thought and, it did affect him a couple of times. He looked, he looked baffled early in the fight. You know, there was a couple times where his shot landed, Canelo's shot landed, and Amir countered with quick, you know, one, two, three combinations, and there was still a situation where you could see Canelo visibly was confused. Like, it was like he had the gnat on him. Right. But he just didn't have enough pop. Now, for me, boxing-wise, I you know, because I like Canelo, but... He's he's more of a puncher than a you know you know it's like almost being a a thrower instead of a pitcher. Yeah, he's it's a, like just throwing a hundred miles an hour yeah. as opposed to being able to paint the corners. Yeah. yeah, and he he likes to load up and hit you with power shots, but he doesn't throw combinations. That's been my problem with him his whole career, and that what that's what gave him a problem against Floyd. Everything gave him a problem against Floyd. But yeah, let's uh, let, let's see because Ellie himself wants to, to to speak on what it was that he saw because he was live ringside at the fight. Sack back, welcome to the Ozone. You know, good and well, you're always welcome, welcome. Friends and family of the Ozone. We just played a clip, uh, an exclusive from ES News from Amir Khan's hotel room the next morning. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how you get this kind of access, man. I'm so impressed. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Amir is a class act. And look, you play sports. And we've been around professional athletes at all kinds of levels. And everybody handles the law a different way. But boxers, especially boxers, because they only fight once a year or twice a year, a loss could mean losing everything. Sponsors, contracts, wow. NBA, baseball, other hockey, hundreds of games. You lose one, who cares? It's, you're supposed to lose a few. Nobody goes on the seat. Right. But if you're a boxer and you lost something, and one loss could be a difference of $4 million to 50000 to 5000 Right. Yeah, and I've seen it happen. I've seen a heavyweight lose a fight, and instead of fighting for $5 million, his next fight he gets 5000 So... It's very tough to approach fighters after loss because you don't know what goes through their mind. But Amir Khan is such a professional. That's why he's such a superstar. It's true, and he, yeah. you, it comes off. It comes off in the. It comes off in the interview, and it comes off every time he speaks. You know what? One thing that I like about him is he upholds his values of his faith, from what I see, because he's even when he's talking, you know, about his opponent, whatever. It's never anything ridiculous. It's never super disrespectful right, or anything not like that. Anyone. He's not defaming anybody. He's not you know salacious and stuff like that. This guy's just living his life. And and, in his life and and the thing is, so accommodating, patient. Look, obviously, he fought the life of his, uh, the fight of his life. He was he went up two weight classes after being out of the ring for eleven months. He was boxing well. He was winning the fight. I don't know what the two judges. I don't know if they weren't watching that fight. Whatever. Yeah. I, hey, I'm with you, man. Yeah, he was, was up. I had him up three rounds to two, if not four rounds to one. Yeah, but Harold Letterman yeah. had him up as well. Had uh, Canelo up. 
whatever. That's just because we know what that is. Yeah. We know what time yeah. it is. And and the <laughs> fact of the matter is, is Amir would have never received a, 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 a decision. I don't care if he would have shut Canelo out. He would have never got that decision yeah, because true. Canelo's worth too much money to the boxing industry. It's true. So I like Canelo, but I keep it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to keep it 100. Person and, and you got to congratulate him not only for the win, but how many times have you seen someone wait to celebrate to make sure his opponent is healthy? Yeah. Hey, and that was that was really classy. Yeah. Because he didn't celebrate. He knocked him out and he went over there and got on his knees immediately to see if the guy was all right. And Amir didn't yeah. look all right. And I have to give you a lot of kudos, man, because honestly, it seemed like you really you you hit all the points afterwards in the hotel room the next morning. Because I know me myself as a fan, I was concerned about his health. You know, I was concerned about his health. I was concerned about his mental well-being and his physical well-being, and it was good for him. I see he retweeted your, the, the interview. It just goes to show how fair of a journalist you know you are about the thing. Now, now, thank you for all that. I really appreciate it because no one ever tells me nice things. All I hear is how much I suck and how much. I... <laughs> hey, listen, you, 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 social you... media could be vicious, but it's okay. I welcome it. It's part of it's part of what I do. Hold on a second, Ellie. Okay. Have you seen the trailers for the new season of Ballers? They got a great line in there, and it's that you're no one until you have enemies. And you know what? You have success because you have enemies, and they they go hand in hand. But you just keep doing what you're doing, man. And one thing I want to get, because I didn't get to go to this fight. I was uh, globe trotting. I wanted to know what the sense in the arena was like, because watching it on television, it felt like, honestly, it felt like the crowd was was actually pretty sensitive to Amir. And it seemed like everybody really appreciated the fact that he was winning the fight. The first round, Amir had it. The second round, Canelo landed a monster shot. Virgil Hunter, Canelo's trainer, told me yesterday that that shot was bigger than the one that knocked out Amir. And Amir took that shot because he saw it coming. We're talking the about the left, right? You're talking about that left, the big left? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We were just talking, yeah, we were just about, talking that. about that. And he rolled with yeah, that he one. rolled with it. And yep. it was just and like, he... it's just like Virgil said. He saw that one. Yep. So the crowd then, like, they were, like, shocked that he came back from that big shot. So there was a little bit into the fight where the entire arena were cheering for Amir. Wow. And then they went back and forth because fans, they just love to see someone do great. Yes. Um, it was electric. It's a new stadium. It's a it's a big money fight. A lot of famous people. I know you go to all the fights, big old man. Oh, come on, there. man. You yeah. see me right there. I'm trying to get in front of you. I'm trying to block your view. Yeah. So I was sitting near Russell Peters, very funny dude, good comedian. And he looked at me every, between rounds, like, how do you have a score? And every round was like, Amir's winning this one, Amir's winning this one. Yeah. I think the fourth round, maybe Canelo, maybe the, I don't know, I had a 3 2 up for Amir as well. But, and then came that, that round where, you know, Can Canelo got him. Well, and you know what? Canelo went to the body, man. Canelo went to the body, and Amir was eating those shots. And then that's when he tried to block a body shot, which left his jaw wide open. And Canelo came with that right. And that's it. You know, he had to cancel and, and, Christmas. And and Canelo learned a lot from the Mayweather fight. That, this is exact. I just, I, Ellie, you sound like you're listening, and I don't even know how. Are you in the studio? What's going on, <laughs> Come on here? Ellie, we got you. This is. Uh, we. Were, I was just saying the same thing. He learned a lot by going to the body, by cutting the ring off. You could see what he learned by fighting a smaller, faster dude. I still don't think he could handle Floyd, but I think that he could. You know, he he definitely could handle another guy that's a, a step below that. Now, one one thing that I I think is really interesting is. They're talking all this nonsense about this fight between Triple G and Canelo. I'm going to go out and say it. I would be amazed if the next big fight is between Triple G and Canelo. I mean, I would be amazed because if I was Oscar De La Hoya, I wouldn't let that fight happen. Well, he's supposed to lose his belt, though, if he doesn't I, fight him, right? I, I, I don't think that fight happens right away. I don't I either. They take another fight. I think maybe Canelo goes down 54. Maybe he fights another opponent. I, I don't see that fight. Honestly... It was very interesting that Canelo called Triple G into the ring because you never see that. You right. really never see that. Jumping in the ring, calling calling people out. You know, we've seen Adana Stevenson do that to Kovalev in Canada recently. But Canelo is a warrior. He wants that fight. He, he as does a fighter, want that fight. As an athlete, you believe you could beat anybody. That's right. If you don't, you're in the wrong business. You sure right. are. And unfortunately, but, he actually doesn't want that fight. He thinks he wants that fight. He, he well, his management, want he wants to fight, but his management doesn't want him to have that fight. I, I don't think so. Because they know better. They know better. They know They know that's and, not the right fight for him. And here's the thing. So Canelo goes that route, but Canelo can fight anybody. And anybody who fights, he's going to sell out. Anybody who fights, is going to be interesting. The people who loved him before this fight love him more now. The people who didn't like him before this fight don't like him even more. It doesn't matter what he does. ES News. 
Ellie Sekback, you always have a great perspective. Thank you for your insight and your time. I ain't going to hold you all day. Thanks for being a friend of the Ozone. Anything else you want to say? Where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Sekback, S-E-C-K-B-A-C-H. But everybody, listen to the Ozone. If you like sports, this is the only podcast you should listen to. See, there oh. it is. This is why you're friends and family. Yeah. We get you the VIP discount. Matter of fact, <laughs> I got a promo code for you coming up for some some spiffy clothes. I'll talk to you soon, Ellie. Thanks for calling in and Let thanks for do. letting us know how it was at the fight. You got it. Thank you, guys. Well, there you have it. You know, that's a, that's a professional uh, insight there from somebody who was at the fight. Right. Uh, which was cool because usually we try to tell people all the time that when you go to the fight, it's a completely different experience watching the fight without anybody feeding your mind with propaganda about right. who's winning and who's losing. And I always say that everyone should watch the fight with the commentators turned off because they're opinionated and they're trying to guide you one way or the other. And just watch the fight for what it is. If you were standing outside watching two guys fight in the street without any commentating, that's what you want to look at how you want to watch these fights because I think at one point they had Canelo uh, uh, in front with punch stats or something. And like here that. it is. I was just, this is where you just jumped right in my brain. I was brain. like, that's not possible. This that's is not, not possible. <laughs> this is not possible. I, I, and I even <laughs> tweeted about it. I said, I think CompuBox stats are very suspect because no there was, it was like the fourth round. It was like yeah. the fourth or the fifth round. And they said that, that Canelo was up like some crazy, like double or triple the amount what of punches. What are you watching? <laughs> I don't know because, because you would see Canelo go once to the body and Amir would answer with two or three shots to the dome. Right. And nice, and not, not to take away anything from his body shot because the body shot was awesome great body shots except that it was one punch it's just that it's one punch and he has that one punch pop yeah. which he can end the fight with as we've seen but as the boxing scoring wise you're talking about a, a four to one Come yeah on. i don't know a compu box needs to get their act together but then again i guess they have it together it's the american way yeah you know that it's 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 the propaganda no matter whether we're talking about the commentating or whether we're talking about the the punch stats, whatever we're talking about, ultimately we're talking about the guy that they want to win, who's going to be the ultimate cash cow, is the guy that's going to get you know all of the the support right. so that people can always point to these bogus numbers and say, no, look, the stats say blah blah blah. Now everybody that you spoke to before the fight would say that Amir Khan had no chance of winning if it went to the cards. Every, because everybody knows. Right. And this is why UFC is taking on boxing as far as popularity. Because you never, ever wonder who wins the UFC fight. You somebody, always know who's won the UFC fight. Out. Or somebody is, is like, is leaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm, I really don't prefer, I, you know, I'm not UFC heavy like that. I need to get my UFC game up, though. Yeah. Well, you know, listen, at this point, it's going to take over. They keep coming with these bogus scorecards. Yeah. Yeah, that's and like uh, when we went to that Canelo Cotto fight, and we saw the judges in the back afterwards. The judges were each 126 years old. Yeah, they couldn't even see the fight. They couldn't even see the fight, even man. if they were in the middle of the ring. Come on. So uh, how would how 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 are these people qualified to give me the actual factuals on what happened? And when I'm sitting at the same point almost as the judges, and I see the fight completely differently. Well, I, I didn't bet on the fight. I got yeah. nothing, you know, I got nothing to lose, uh, nothing to gain by, by calling it one way or the other. Yeah, well, I think it, what's even sicker than that is that when you speak to people who were at that fight and saw it and when when they're not in front of the camera, they were like, oh, wow, he got an ass whooping, meaning Canelo. Yes. And then when the camera, when the camera turns, rolls they're on. like, oh, man, what a great fight Canelo fought. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Dude, a lot, and a lot of other sportscasters yeah. who we saw at that fight yeah. backstage. They're going to cut our access off. We're not even gonna, they're not going to let us gonna back there anymore. Take me off the nipple. They're going to take me off the nipple. Come on. I take need the nipple. Chi-chi. I need that chichi. I need that chichi Rodriguez. <laughs> no. Oh, don't do it. Yeah. Well, you know what's staying in that theme? You know, you see a lot of grumblings going on now about Floyd Mayweather. Uh, they had that video where he came out and, you know, at the um, the, the premiere fights, and he was, you know, he he said that he's the one that's sparking all the rumors, which is hilarious. He's the one that said, he said, look, all the rumors that you guys are hearing, I'm the one that's starting these rumors. <laughs> so <laughs> they're not rumors then. Which is awesome. Uh, on one level, uh, one thing that I saw that was surprising is the champ, they said he was up to 162 pounds, uh, which is a trip because he's eating good out there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, 
everybody knows that Floyd Mayweather ain't retired. Somebody's going to offer him some insane sum of money, and he's going to take it, and he's going to try to do— about nine figures right now, right? Come on, man. And he's going to try—he ain't coming out for less than nine figures. I would be disappointed if he came out for less than nine figures. Yeah, but the thing of it is that society should hold him for social ransom and make him fight a fight that people want to see, not another Berto or a hand-picked cookie. Make him fight someone. And Conor McGregor is not a fight for him because as a professional fighter, if he gets in the ring, he will will destroy destroy Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. I That's will not, bet everything that I have. And Conor McGregor on. is looking for a payday. He's not looking to have a great fight. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. He and just like, why is he trying to get a fight anyway? He just lost. Well, you know, because because now there's a real, uh, you know, the force is imbalanced in the world of UFC because really he's a bigger star than everybody in the. He's a bigger star than the UFC, and he's now going head up with the boss of the UFC with Dana White. Because he's putting out tweets, yeah, it's back on. I'm on 200. Dana White's coming out like, actually, no, you're, no not. you're not on 200. You know, yeah, but what about Floyd's whole stick about fighting winners? I mean, Conor McGregor is not the champ. <laughs> he he lost. Ah, uh, whatever to that. I I don't really even care about that. I I think that if he's coming out, it's gonna be a fight that people want to see. It's gonna be a big money fight. Like the Pacquiao. The, the Pacquiao issue too? is, I don't know if it would be that. Truth be told, I to be heard emotion. something. <clears throat> I heard something that was pretty fascinating where they were talking about a canelo floyd too and that fight would probably be bigger than pacquiao floyd even though it would be a better fight to watch pacquiao fight floyd i don't think it would be bigger than pacquiao i do no i do and canelo's, canelo's got can- a nation of latinos i know but that are waiting for him and yeah. by a nation i mean the entire spanish-speaking world canelo still could not beat that guy i mean because I, listen you knew he couldn't beat him the first time yeah, around that's true so nobody's been able to beat him so that doesn't really say much to say that that he can't beat him yeah it's true you know, there's, there's no way to get around 49 and that big fat zero that comes after it. So, oh, yeah, there's a way to get around it because Mike Tyson's, uh, you know, whole little run was stacked with a bunch of cookies. You know, you got you got to fight some of the guys in their prime. Floyd didn't fight Manny Pacquiao in his prime. Floyd, you, you're... You, I, you, you're making a point that's completely moot. You're right, but it doesn't yeah. matter because what? at the end of the day, Floyd Mayweather's 49-0 and, and he's retired. And he's got all the billions in the world and everybody who's mad about it just has to be mad about it because what he's going to do when he comes back is he's going to fight somebody who like a triple G that he's going to try to 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 term to make all the terms go in his favor so that the guy has to come in at 120 pounds uh, or <laughs> after going to fight at 200 pounds or something like that. And he unfortunately for actual fans of the sport. He dictates these terms from a business perspective, and then everybody has to deal with it. And then just like Sugar Ray Leonard did fight Marvin Hagler, Marvin Hagler in the big ring, yeah. and with the shorter rounds, yeah. uh, we have we have Sugar Ray Leonard to blame for the 12-round fight, everybody, just anybody who didn't know. Yeah. Sugar Ray, it, when he f- came out of retirement and uh, Marvin Hagler wanted to beat him up so bad, he, he went along with everything, which he shouldn't have because he, he was a champ. he said so afterwards. And he lost his undefeated – well, he lost his 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 streak of uh, championship defenses. Yeah. And, and you know, and this is, this is the business of sports. It's the business of boxing. And it's unfortunate because the fans are the ones who get cheated. Really? You know who's not getting cheated? Oh, anybody who subscribes to the 5-4 Club. Did you know that for $65 a month, actually it's $60 a month, you can get $150 worth of clothing from 5-4? And hey, word on the street is that you have a promo code. Why you got to tell everybody? Promo code I got is Omar. The promo code is Omar. And uh, everybody can go sign up, get yourself some 5-4 clothing, and you're going to get a large percentage off of your first couple months of your subscription. And you're going to start looking sharp and the ladies are going to want to talk to you. Oh, yeah. So, moving on, it's a very, very interesting week in sports. I want to talk about these NBA playoffs. A lot of injuries. Oh, what is going on? It, it's really big injuries. I mean, to the big guys. This yeah. isn't like Kwame Brown got injured. No. We're talking about Curry, Whiteside. And, and, and Curry has been Valis injured. Valisalunas. And Valisalunas. <laughs> Valisalunas is hurt? Yeah. He's out. What? <laughs> yeah, Jonas. Baby, that's nuts. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. Sir. Well, that's a big deal because for me, I thought with Hassan Whiteside out that uh it's that, a cakewalk for Toronto, that right? it was gonna be a cakewalk for Toronto. No. And you know what they're talking about? He's day to day. Hey, look, man, I've sprained ligaments in my <laughs> knee. You're not day to day, dude. You're not day to day. Sprained you need MCL. Time. Sprained MCL? You need at least a couple weeks. At the least. I mean, right. he's a look young at, kid. Look at but Steph. Steph is going through the same thing. Look at right Steph. Now. You're talking about a primetime athlete who's mm-hmm. a small guy right. who heals up quicker, who's right. you know what I mean, lighter. 
uh, you're giving lighter him, dude. Yeah, and you're giving him a couple of weeks. I would be surprised if he can come back at all. Yeah, either way it goes, they, you know, either way it goes, I mean, I'm going to come out of my face and say something crazy, and it's that I don't know if anybody can beat the Cleveland Cavaliers right now. They look nice. I mean, damn. Or, or Atlanta turned into a high school team. Atlanta has always been a high school team when the postseason. They be a varsity. They, they, they frosh off. <laughs> frosh off. Frosh <laughs> off. But you know, it but but here's the thing. Regardless, it's still as we can see with uh teams like the Warriors, teams like the Spurs, it's still hard to win an NBA postseason game, no matter who it is that you're playing. It's true. And these guys have won eight straight and now they get to rest. And I can tell you, nobody in the league wants to see a fully rested LeBron James. Nobody. Nobody wants to see that. I'm telling you. And they've been able to fly under the radar. Um, you got oh, Kevin Love with confidence now? Now Kevin Love has confidence. Kyrie Irving is out there looking Forget like AM1. It. Forget about J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith put the weed <laughs> on, down man. for a little bit. Maybe they I got count. him to put the weed down just for a couple months so that he can then in turn – uh, now get get out and actually shoot some open shots. Iman Shumpert is hitting shots. Yeah, they're clowning. I mean, they are Christmas clown, and Tyron Lue has them playing well. Salute to Coach Lou. Right. I wonder what David Blatt thinks about the situation. <laughs> Do you think he's sitting back there bitter wants a couple of losses? He, he wants, he to, wants to, to see those he losses. He wants to get eliminated. I, he should, because think about it. He set the team up, and uh, I, but he couldn't get them to play together. Wow. Set them up to fail. Set them up to fail. <laughs> he set them up all right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you know – um. Tristan Thompson is out there balling. Banging he's the worth, boards. He's banging the boards. He's worth every dollar of his contract so far. Um, and you know the thing that I like that I see from the Cavs in these games? They don't panic. No. But and as many threes as they're shooting and they're, they're, they're setting records and blah, 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 I don't feel like they're dependent on the three. The three is, is an open shot. Is there. Because LeBron is unstoppable when he chooses to go to the rack. Right. And then everybody else is wide open. Goes to the rack or reports to the post, you got a problem. There's problems, and you have to double down and crash, and they got the ball movement now to find the open guy, which seems to be Kevin Love almost every time. And Kevin's game is looking just like it did when he was in Minnesota. Right. He's, he seems like he's found his role, and there's no stress. The game just looks easy for, for the Cavs right now. You know what I mean? It doesn't look – there's there's that kind of like that laissez-faireness that, that the Warriors had all season where it's like, listen, we'll turn it on when we need to turn it on. You're not going to beat us. Right, and I think that now um, – they they should be the the team to beat. I think they should be the favorite. Yeah. I think betting wise now they're two to one. The Spurs are three to one, and uh, I think the Warriors are like ten to eleven or something like that. But it's a very interesting situation now. Given what you felt like on previous podcasts previously on nine zero two one zero, what do you think is going to happen in this Warriors series if Steph continues to not play? Um, I love Damian Lillard. I think they can take him to seven games. <laughs> that sounds like a confession. Yeah, it right. <laughs> was. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> um, I think they can take him to seven games, but they're not going to beat him overall. I think that they're with wa- or without Steph. Yeah, I think that they're going to wear him down eventually. I think that Draymond Green is the glue that holds that team together more than anybody. Yeah, he's yeah. a monster, and he does. He really does. He holds them together. But I also think that they're a great team. You yeah, know, they're a they, team. They, they like each other. They like each and it shows. And Those guys hang that's out outside of the locker room. room. You know, and you now that's what's going yeah. on in Cleveland. Yeah, they finally had a breakthrough. I don't know if they had to go to counseling or something, but, you know, last year <laughs> it seemed like Kevin Love was, like, outside looking in. Yeah. Face mask against the glass. Let me in. Let me yeah, in. yeah, put him on the glass. <laughs> yeah. a lot style. But, uh, but yeah, there's, you know what? You're right, and now he's in. Yeah. And everybody's in trouble. And I don't like the way that that Spurs series is looking. I don't either. But I, I don't like the way that it's looking because of some of the officiating. It looks to me they're making a conscious effort of keeping the big man Tim Duncan out of the game in a lot of times. They want to keep to him out of the game, game. To drag that series out, right? When Lamar, all, uh, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge came out and put up 45 and 40 those first couple games, mm-hmm. they decided they did not want another sweep. Right. And then there's been a lot of suspect calls that go the Thunder's way. <laughs> right, to keep Tim Duncan out of the game pretty much. And not just him, though, but just to keep the, the, to keep the little man ball. The NBA could not be happier about the situation that's taken place with the with the type of basketball that the, the Golden State Warriors have ushered into the league. Right. Now. Because now the game, even though the root of their success is defense – 
the part that everybody celebrates and talks about are the Splash Brothers. Right. Is the shooting, the cute shots from, from half court. Right. All of the sexy dribbling and this and the other. This is all stuff that Joe Fan can actually fantasize and think that he actually has a chance to do when he goes to the park. Right, because he can't grow to be 6'10". He overnight. can't be 6'10 like LeBron, yeah. and he can't mash on somebody's nose like LeBron. Right. But, but he can to develop a jumper. He can develop a jumper and make your life at the park miserable because you got to watch this <laughs> fool shoot all day thinking he's Steph Curry. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so, and so you know, and it's a trip, though, because now the superstar uh, that they, they have is actually the three-pointer. Right. The superstar isn't a player. The superstar is this mythical new basket, which isn't new or mythical. Because I'm here to tell you, if somebody was in the playoffs with that full-blown dominant big man, i.e. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, Shaquille, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, Alonzo Mourning, David Robinson, these kind of guys. Ewing, all those big guys. All those big guys. Guess what? All of this nonsense would mean nothing. Because every time you miss one of these shots, they're going back down and they're getting two. Well, I'll go even deeper than that. Or if they'll get three the hard way. Yeah, if you have a guy like Dennis Rodman out there. You got a guy like <laughs> Worm who's just committed to banging the board. Yeah, or playing D- – or I'll go out there and D-up Steph Curry. Okay? You, yeah. <laughs> let me shut you down. Yeah. Everybody else do their job. I'm going to shut this guy down. Yep. And you know, and it, you don't have to hurt him. You can just shut him down. Yeah, you don't have to hurt him. And there's a, there's a very interesting thing that's happening in the game and the evolution of the game now, which to me is just mind blowing. What, no defense. Everybody's embrace it. Not not no defense because I will say this: the Cavs are locking you up come they fourth lock quarter. You up. They lock you the up. The Spurs lock you up. Spurs lock you up all four quarters. And the problem is, is that then sometimes they get the raw deal with the with the refs because their game isn't sexy at all. No, they play the least sexy game in the remaining in the playoffs. They give you the blue collar work. They give you great Detroit, Michigan work, <laughs> also known as San Antonio, Texas work. <laughs> yeah. And and it's blue collar. They're putting together. They're stamping labels on Fords at the assembly plant, mm-hmm. and and it's not sexy to the general public. Our mother likes to watch the the the, the Warriors play. Because, be, because, because it's a, a cute game. It's yeah. a game she can identify with. Because then they can celebrate and do a shoulder yeah. shake and whoa! <laughs> when you're giving them big fundamental style and you're going in the post and your footwork is is beautiful and you go off the glass to basketball purists, that's sexy. But nobody, you know, basketball purists don't pay the bills. They don't. And not only that, you know, because a guy like Steph Curry, who's all world, I love him. He can, he's got handles. He's got defense. Yeah. He's well, got his defense is not really the up to code as, you know, as far I as the standard. It's not up no, to code. It's not, it's not to the next level, but to, to consider. It's not him, above average. Yeah. It's, but they consider him. He plays him, average NBA defense, in my opinion. Yeah. They consider him the best player in the league. I, just, I know. It's I unbelievable. Can't, I can't roll with that. I mean, because you got guys out there. Honestly, I Look would take Kawhi Dray- Leonard. Yeah, Kawhi Leonard. I would take Draymond Green over Steph Curry if you were talking about putting a complete player out there. That guy is a triple double waiting to happen. Yeah, but at the same time, when Steph is there, the magic happens, man. It's and, you know, happening right now while he's not there. Yeah, those guys, they, they believe. They've bought into the system. Yeah. I'm just very interested to see what happens tonight. So they're, they're up two to one. Um, and, and you woke up D Lil. And you woke up Lillard. And I wonder, though, because I think they end up winning this series in in five, maybe six max. I don't think they take them to seven. I don't see the mental fortitude in the Trailblazers that I need to see. Uh, They're not there yet. I don't. Yeah, I don't. And and they don't have a LaMarcus Aldridge. If this team played with LaMarcus Aldridge and playing the the Warriors, they could probably go to the finals. Right. They put a lot of focus in Myers Leonard and he just didn't pan out this year. Yeah. And maybe he'll maybe he'll get himself together next year. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about some more, a little bit more about that Spurs Thunder series while we're on it. And that series is actually surprising me that it's 2 2. Obviously, it's going at least six. The Spurs are, you know, I still, no matter what I'm saying about LeBron now, it's just hard to see the Spurs, anybody beating the Spurs in seven to me. Uh, they have such a complete team. And all the way to the coach, I all mean, the way top to bottom. They have bottom. a system and they live and die by it. From the Ruda yeah. to the Tuda. Exactly. And, and they got a bunch of underestimated high, players. Yeah, and so you never hear Tony shots. Parker, you never hear people praising Tony Parker about being the great. Right. And that really bothers me because Tony Parker is clutch. He's not a great shooter, but guess what? In the clutch, he gets the job done. Well, he's given Russell Westbrook a serious problem this time. Yeah. Because he's decided to attack the basket and it's a problem. Yeah. You know? He's he's dishing a rock out. They're playing as a team. But the going back to the Cavaliers, they're they're just too much. I mean, with Kyrie and LeBron and Kevin Love doing his thing, it's too much. It's, it's too much in the East. I think the main thing that they have is they're going to have all this rest. So everybody's going to come in great to the next series. 
say the next series against the Raptors aren't real. We all know the Raptors aren't real. And I don't. <laughs> well, I actually, I actually didn't even think that the Raptors would get by the Heat until Whiteside got hurt. Right. Because the Heat actually is a much tougher matchup for the for the Cavs than the the Raptors are. Now you see what the Raptors can do though is that they can bring somebody off the bench. They still have a couple of backup centers, so they'll still be able to bring a big man out there. Was it Bayumba? Yeah. Yeah, Bayumbaye, Ali Bumbaye. Yeah. He's out there and he can get busy. But, you know, ultimately, in my opinion, let's just play it out and assume that the Cavs get to the finals. I see the Cavs beating the Warriors in the finals with or without Steph Curry. I don't see the Cavs beating the Spurs in the finals. I think Greg Popovich knows how to beat LeBron James. He's beat him two times in the finals now or three times in the finals? No, it's, I think it's twice. He beat him twice. He should have beat him three times, but <laughs> Ray Allen pulled the magic out of his hat. Yeah. But, the, but you know, you're talking about beating LeBron. But now it's not about beating LeBron because you have no, no, Love no, 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 and no, you have no, Irving. No, 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 no. But and, I, I'm and talking about as a team. I'm talking about that Miami Heat team is better than this Cleveland Cavaliers team is. Not not the way they're playing now. I don't think so. I, I, I really don't because you're talking about Kevin you, Love. You, you're forgetting Chris Bosh. Right? I know, but Kevin Chris Bosh, Kevin Love, Dwayne Wade, to, and yeah, LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Ray to, Allen. Yeah, but Kevin Love used to carry drunk? a team by himself. And now he's playing as a as Kevin Love is not Chris Bosh and Kyrie Irving. There's nothing. There's no other guard out there like Kyrie Irving, pretty much. That no, can, but Ray Allen is the greatest three point shooter of all time. Nah, so that's wh- not what they're saying now. I don't care about what they're saying now. What <laughs> yeah. the numbers say is that he's the all time leading three point shooter. It does so? I, I don't know. If we're talking Heat versus Cavs. I I'm gotta go Cavs. with that. He, I'm not. No way. No way. Too many those. I mean, you never like you never cared for Chris Bosh's game, but Bosh is legit. And he is legit. Those I guys think, and, yeah, and Dwayne legit. Wade is a stone cold killer. He's one of the best of all time. Of all time, and he he's an underrated player. I'm and truth really be told, underrated. I'm really interested to see how that game plays out tonight because Dwayne Wade can pull the the rabbit out of his hat when he needs to. And I don't come think up he has the role one. players. I don't think he has the guys to support that. Well, not with Whiteside being hurt. One of the reasons that he's been able to do what he's been able to do in the postseason is because he knows how to play with the big man after playing with the diesel. And even a declining diesel, he knows how to play with the big man and get the most out of himself and the big man. Well, you need to you need to be in a position for a guy like Joe Johnson to not have to give you much, but to give you a little bit here and there. Right. You, Lou Aldang, it's time for him to step up. It's been time for Lou Aldang to step up. Well, he's got to do it now because they don't have that support with Whiteside. Yeah. And you know what? It's going to be interesting to see what Goran Dragic does because Dragic was balling. He's been balling all playoffs. He's so inconsistent. Though. He's completely depend, inconsistent. Can't, de- can't depend on him. I can't depend on him. But at the same time, now's the time we're going to see who's real and who's not. Yeah. So that, that's where we're on those NBA playoffs. So if you had to call it right now, who do you say wins the championship? Cleveland. Wow. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, playing, they're playing – well, they're playing together, and that's more important than anything because it's the same thing you, you saw from Westbrook last night. Westbrook decided to dish the rock instead of shooting it 30-something times, and they win. That's how it works because you can't take 30 shots, and then uh, Durant takes 30 or 40 shots, and then you have the Stephen Adams and everybody else that are not a part of the game. They need to touch the ball too. You let Stephen Adams be a part of the – he was a big-time part of the hey, game last Steven night. Stephen Adams has been a big-time part of their team the whole season. Yeah, but they're not using him. They used him the right way last night. And wow. it and it showed because he's got size. Size matters. Size matters. It really does. You know what else matters? What? Knowing the time. And uh, with these racer edition watches from Ritmo Mundo, nice. you can know exactly what time it is. Nice. I love it. I know you love your Remo Mundo. Yeah. You look sharp in it. Thank you. Yeah. Sharp really nice. James. You look like sharp. That's the book of mine. <laughs> ah, New Jersey politics. <laughs> Gotta love them. So uh, uh, moving on, let's talk a little baseball. Yeah, there's a lot going on. A lot of injuries right now. A lot of injuries. But what about Major League Baseball handing out these PED? Uh, and uh, there's supposed to be more on the way. supposed to be more on the way. I got a feeling there's a whopper in there somewhere. I got a feeling there's a big kahuna out there. That he is and, coming. That you like to be like a kahuna. <laughs> and I hope he's not on my fantasy team. <laughs> Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, seriously. I yeah. hope it's not one of my early round picks. Right. Uh, you know, I'm surprised at some of the teams that haven't been playing so well. Yeah, you got the Astros. I think that it's still time to turn it around. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean it's mean, early. Lance McCullough is supposed to be coming back this weekend. That's nice. Uh, yeah, and you got a. Uh, dude, Lance is coming back. <laughs> you coming by, bro? Lance is coming back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming back, and he's coming back to deal. He's coming back. Lance got that big cheese for you. Yeah, big, Ooh, big cheese. And crazy Dookie. 96 and Crazy Dookie. Yeah. Lance McCullers is legit. Well, you know, uh, um, the Astros are playing bad. I think they went the wrong way with committing to to Lou Gregerson staying as their closer when they had Ken Giles. Messed up his confidence. I, I think that they gave him the Drew Storen a little bit. Yeah. Um, 
And they I, traded the farm away from him. Exactly. And they're not producing offensively the way that they, you know. You got the top three, and after that, it's, it falls off. Yeah, it falls off. It's it a falls off heavy. Decline. I tell you what, though, who's not playing well that's surprising is just 500 team of the Kansas City Royals. Yeah, but they turn it on. They have the, but their pitching is not what it used to be either. I yeah. mean, Edison Volk. I felt like they should have really done everything they could have to keep Johnny Cueto there. Obviously. I mean, because Johnny Cueto's dealing once again. Oh, he, he's, Johnny Cueto is second only to Clayton Kershaw over the last five years in all of the top pitching stats. Yes, this and is Clayton true. Kershaw is arguably the greatest pitcher of all time. So, yeah, what are we? What, what, what are we really did, saying? Saw what he did to Toronto the other day. Oh, why did he do game. Toronto so dirty? <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful. Why did he do Toronto so that dirty? Was those and, he, and he was there. off. <laughs> and he was off. <laughs> and he was off. Yeah, he was talking about his slider. He was like, a lot of those guys probably thought it was a changeup because it was it wasn't really doing <laughs> anything, and he was still getting it done. Struck out ten. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, but how about those Cubbies? I have to say, I have to give the I have to give the gamblers credit because they said the Cubs were going to be legit. The Cubs are getting it done right now. They just went and uh, completed a sweep of the Nationals, yeah, and they had to they had to fight for it, and they got it right. The bullpen's coming through for them. That's what's stepping up more so than anything because the front line pitching is there. But what they're doing is building a short bridge to the bullpen, and you do that, then you don't have to rely on you know putting up ten runs every game. Yeah. Because they're they're you know they're susceptible to the strikeout still. Yeah, they're young players out there. Because Rizzo's have, a real anchor for them though. Yeah, and they Rizzo's have a big a taper. Vet. Yeah, they have a taper off in their lineup after the first four. You know, you think about it. You have, who do you have? You have Addison Russell, and he's not. He's he's a good ball player, but he's not there. He's yet. not there yet. And he's most, gonna be most there. Most of these though. guys are, gonna aren't there. there yet. You got Dexter Fowler at the top, and then you have uh, what Chris Bryant. Yeah, you have Rizzo. Then he got Javi Baez with that walk-off bomb yesterday. Yeah, and see, but these guys are complimentary players at this yeah. point. They're not anchors. They're going to be the guy, but yeah, they're, they're not the guy the guys, yet. But they're not there But yet. they're going to get there quickly with Joe Madden. Yeah. Because this guy knows how he knows what he's doing. This is Tell De- me this. What happened, to, what happened to Devin Travis? He's coming back from the shoulder injury. They said, but he's going to have to earn his job back. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that shoulder, you know, so, shoulder surgery is serious in baseball. It really zaps you, your power. It zaps your power. And, and you have, he had crazy power. Yeah. And it takes a long time to build it back up. He's huh. almost been out a year. That, this is what that's what made me ask about him is mm-hmm. because it doesn't. It seems like longer than a year. It seems like, you know, I, I watch the games. They don't even talk about him anymore. In uh, they don't even talk about him like at, in when you watch the Toronto games now, which yeah. is surprising to me. I read up on him that he's supposed to be. Uh, he has to earn his job back, which is you know not nice. <laughs> hey, Cap. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a little technical difficulty there. Sorry about that. Yeah, he's, um, you know, so it's it's all good, though. That'll make him even more hungrier if he has to earn his job back. Yeah, there's that. You know, I think that uh, Arizona is realizing that they accomplished absolutely nothing in the offseason. <laughs> nice, uh, nice moves. Even though they, I mean, they, they're the owners of winning three straight. The, the race I really want to talk about is going on in the American League East, though. I mean, the Yankees are terrible. Let's start with that. Yeah, and I don't think that I don't see any way that they can get better. The farm Me system is not that good. CC Sabathia gave him much more than expected so far this yeah, season and before now he's getting hurt. hurt. Yeah, and so honestly, just like they the, got a Rawls Chapman coming back, but you still got to score some runs to get ahead. Yeah, and one of the things that they're going to have to do, which everybody always hates to talk about, is that if you have one young stud. You have to trade him and get the most for him, just like the Angels are talking about trading Mike Trout. Yeah, you have to give up Severino. <laughs> Severino's a stud. Yeah, and he's, I mean, they're not scoring runs for him. And you know the mentality of a pitcher. If you're not scoring runs, then they figured that, that they have to do they it themselves. They got to do it themselves. That's yeah. they start grooving fastballs yeah. and Poppy goes deep. Now, uh, the one thing that I find really interesting looking at the, the, the standings is the Baltimore Orioles are going to be very hard to beat. They, they have a crazy home record. They're 13-5 and five at the house. They're really hard to beat at home. Honestly, I don't see anybody in the American League being able to beat them. I can see the Red Sox beating them. I'm, I'm still sticking with the Red Sox. I really like the Red Sox. They are, they are nice. They're the young. Red Sox I like are nice. That. But see, they're young, and they got a mix of young and the vets. Yeah, but you don't have anybody on your squad like Manny Machado. <laughs> I mean, there's not really many people in the league like Manny Machado. You have like three or four of them, but they don't have anyone like that. And then you compliment them with Adam Jones as a five-tool player. You got yep. Mark Jumbo Trumbull. You have Pedro Alvarez. And Mark Trumbull has his confidence back. Yeah, and you got you have Chris Davis. I mean, you got Jonathan Scope who comes through every now and then. I mean, they have a stacked team, and their pitching is in their the lineup is, is is comparable, if not the best, to, to anybody. But what do you think about their pitching? Chris Tillman seems like he's figured it out this yeah. year. Kevin Gosman as well. Yeah. Yeah, so they're the real deal. I mean, so I, 
on any given day, well, not even on any given day, they're the best team in baseball to me right now. They're the best team in baseball to me too. I think they're better they, than the Cubs. You're talking about I Jake. Think they're Ar- better than the Cubs. Yeah, you're talking about a Jake Arrieta that would go out there and pitch against them. Okay, he'll pitch once, maybe you know, in a three game series if you played him head up during the season, but during a playoff game, a World Series, you'll see him twice, maybe three times at best. But you're talking about sticks that you're gonna never take a break from all the way. Now the surprise to me is the Seattle Mariners. Dude, I love it. Wow. Yeah, I love it. Now, what do you think happened up in Seattle that got them able to start actually turning the beat around? I would honestly think that they, you would have to look at their pitching coach because you have a guy like Nathan Carnes who's honestly throwing well now. He had nine strikeouts the other day, Gabe, but I think one Ernie, one Ernie and nine strikeouts. I mean, you have uh, – they're turning Wade Miley around. Wade Miley was – a bum. A, I didn't want to throw it out there like that. Why you want to put him under the gun? He, Wait, he, I'm he, saying was. He was, he was a bum. Around. He's not a bum anymore. Maybe his shoulder was hurt. No, <laughs> he was just a bum. <laughs> That's why you give it to the pitching coach because he's obviously figured something out. Nathan Carnes was on Tampa Bay, and he yeah. wasn't throwing like that. No, no, he wasn't. I mean, look at Steve Cisek. Yes, yeah, Steve Cisek is, is actually out there closing the door. He's yeah, getting he's stuff one done. of the best closers in the game right now. He's so got it back together. you got to give the pitching coach some credit. And you knew wow. that they had offense. Wow. Yeah, so they're the real deal. Man. And and the West is terrible. Texas can't get it together because they don't really have any pitching besides West Cole. Is terrible. Besides Cole Hamill. And Derek Holland. But he's a, he seems Derek like Holland he's gave up 11 Ernie's. Yeah, they, they got it. They got it. They got it. We got a question to coach on that. How do you because give up you, 11 Ernie's? You, you can't too, let him feel the urn. <laughs> he felt the urn. He did. It's too far. Wow. Yeah, and the big exciting series tonight starts at Chavez Ravine. Ooh. The Mets versus the Dodgers. Ooh. Only thing I wish is that Clayton Kershaw was throwing in this series, but you know, can't I throw every game. Can't throw every game, and I gotta say that the Mets are gonna win this series. They're coming out tonight with Stephen Matz, who honestly no. may be the Mets. Stephen Matz. Is I think it's the Grom, the Grom, and uh, Alex Woods. No, it's Stephen Matz versus Scott Casimir. Really? And I believe that Stephen Matz is possibly their best pitcher on the staff right now. Matz is. You think he's better than Thor? I don't know. I mean, Thor is pretty incredible. Thor, he really has that lightning bolt with Thor an arm. But this is going to be a good series. I think it's going to be a good test for the Dodgers. The Dodgers are sitting atop the National League West right now. But, you know, I have to say as a Dodgers supporter, they haven't been too impressive. We have the same problems that we always have, which is bullpen. We really got to bridge the gap in L.A. and get somebody in middle relief that is lights out because we don't really have that group or that person that we can depend on there and it's a serious problem wow yeah they, they haven't they haven't had a bullpen in like three years at least man it's been a long time since they had a, a committed bullpen where you feel good about everybody that's coming out well and they're so afraid of paying you know a nice middle reliever which or, is amazing or bringing up a kid that are bringing up a kid that they have now they're going to they're talking about bringing up julio your eyes which is going to bring him up to, to start a, uh, for no, the bullpen bullpen and he's like the next coming of Clayton Kershaw, pretty much. Yeah, he's supposed to be a stud. Yeah. Can't yeah. even buy a, a, a sack of tobacco. Yeah. But, but he's uh, 19 he's, years old, but he's, he's supposed a to be. Stud. They're talking about bringing him up. They're talking about bringing him up to the, you know, being the bullpen. But they have to do something. Or that that whole West is like upside down. Wow. You have the Giants that are struggling. And the Rockies actually could be a sleeper team because they have a lot of nice young pitchers over there. Jonathan Gray. Uh, who is it? Tyler Chatwood over there. That's honestly Dylan, Eddie Butler. Those guys are Dylan away from Colorado, and they're giving you a good comp in Colorado. Giving you a good comp. Well, I want to bring out a new segment on you today. And you know what it is? Ooh. Uh. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. We're talking about the smooth operators, folks, and we got some smooth operators Ooh, yeah. this week. This week's smooth operator, well, I got a couple. First and foremost, I'm going to give it to Big Poppy. Big Poppy went in and, uh, you know, Big Poppy went into the New York Yankee Stadium and showed his ass this weekend. And he, I think they got him riled up. They got him riled up because they cheated him yeah. on that call. That was a terrible the, call, by the way. The umpire's whole game was terrible. That was a terrible And that game. just was a culmination yeah. of his terribleness. Right. That was a terrible call. Uh, that was one of the worst calls I've ever seen I'll, in Major League Baseball. Now, you've met Big Poppy. How tall is he? Uh, about six three and how six three six four. Yeah, now how far was that ball off the ground that they called strike three on him? Oh man, about one two. Yeah, <laughs> it was, and they that, want that him to terrible. take it and not say anything. But he's earned the stripes. He could say yeah, he, he yeah. has to say something. So my dad, you know, he's a, he's a he's a smooth operator. I'm gonna give you a couple of them. He's a smooth operator. Uh, I gotta give one to LeBron James. LeBron James hit the big shot, and he's really leading his team. 
and they believe in him. He's a smooth operator out there. And I'm going to tell you my final smooth operator, and I think that you're really going to appreciate this one. It is one young man known as Bartolo Colon. Ooh, BC. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. Ah. Bartolo <laughs> Colon hit his first home run in the major leagues at the tender age of 42 years old. <laughs> no doubter. And it was a no doubter <laughs> in a pitcher's park. BC. BC in the place to be C. And he got what it takes to hit the bomb right Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's our smooth operator segment. Ah. <sighs> What a great addition of the Ozone. Feels good to be back in Korea town. Sure is. And you know what? One last thing I want to just touch on, and we'll, we'll get into next time, but... Touch on it. I think this might be the end of Tim Duncan's career. Oh, yeah. I think this no is question. it. I think this is his last but no hurrah. Pomp, but no pomp and circumstance. Huh? Just pop. No pomp and just pop. And mm-hmm. I, and and you know what? With, with that in mind, I think he's going to do everything he can to go out with that ring. Yeah. Really. I just think if he retires with six rings. How much Ooh. of an in-your-face would that be to Kobe and Shaq? Right, right. If he went out with six rings. I always liked him more so because he always looked out for the next guy coming up. That whole yeah. organization is like that. Look at that. They're taking LaMarcus Aldridge under their wing. Yep. They're teaching him how to, you know, to pass on a torch to him like Tony Parker's doing with uh, Patty Ka- Mills. No, Kawhi Leonard. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, Kawhi Leonard. I mean, come on, dude. Most of these guys, they just like, okay, well, I'm out, so I'm out. You know, yep. I'm not going to help the next guy out. They, they don't do that over there. They groom the next guy. The next man up, and they they show up, man. This is Shit. awesome. So Tim Duncan, man, hats off, man. Dude's a stud. In the words of Hulk Hogan, you're yeah. awesome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another session of the Ozone. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Omar Miller. I am at Omar Miller on Twitter. Holla at me, at Omar Vincent Miller on Instagram. I'm yeah. with my brother, Terry Miller, who is at Icons, E-Y-E-C-O-N-Z, on both Twitter and Instagram. Holla at us, folks. This is the Ozone. It's unfair. It's partial sports. We tell it how we think it is and how we think it should be. What do you think? Drop us a line. Leave us a review. Catch you soon. Ozone. Ozone.